Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this webinar offered by the European School Education Platform, the European Commission's platform for school education in Europe. My name is Marta, and I will be your host for today. Just a practical information uh, before we officially start, the webinar is recorded and the recording might be used for dissemination purposes. And if you have questions, comments, thoughts, feel free to post them in the chat. So the focus for today is using artificial intelligence to support teaching and learning in schools. We will explore together this topic by examining a set of brand new guidelines for teachers about the use of artificial intelligence in schools, followed by a more general exploration of the potential impact of artificial intelligence in school and concrete examples uh, um, of what teachers can do in school. For the first part, it's my pleasure now to invite on virtual stage uh, Maria Guduma from the European Commission. She has been working on design and implementation of the Digital Education Action Plan 2021-2027, leading action seek on emerging technologies, artificial intelligence and data, among other tasks. She is also a cybersecurity ambassador for DG Education Youth, Sport and Culture and a member of numerous steering committees and advisory boards. Thank you very much, Maria, for being with us today. The floor is yours. Thank you very much for the invitation and uh, the opportunity to present the guidelines that were published just yesterday. Uh, I will share my screen if that's OK with you. Yes, absolutely. OK, is it visible? Yeah, you only need to put it in presentation mode. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Now we see, I think, the seconds. OK, that's great. Yes, <laughs> floor is yours. OK, perfect. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much for actually attending uh, this event today. We are very happy to present uh, the first ever ethical guidelines on uh, the use of uh, artificial intelligence and uh, data in education uh, developed by the EU, along with um, a group of experts that uh, assisted us in uh, covering this wide topic. Uh, just to begin with a little bit, I would like to discuss about AI in general. Most of you will probably know that AI is already in our lives. It is here to stay. Maybe we don't really know it every day, but AI is being used in numerous systems. For example, when you go through an airport with facial recognition or when you play on a Duolingo device learning a, a new language or uh, it is also used in hospitals for medical purposes, just to give you some examples. Evidently, AI is here to stay. So a basic challenge for us and a basic question was, how can we use AI in education in a safe and also practical manner that would have a lot of benefits and will create even more opportunities for teachers and students? That was the main incentive coming out from a real life observation. We realized the potential and we also realized that AI is part of a digital ecosystem, a digital world, and we need to embrace it. Therefore, we started developing these guidelines in order to assist teachers, students, but every interested party and stakeholder in understanding artificial intelligence in educational settings a little better. So, if we have a look a little bit at what AI and data in education really mean, it means that you can have more resources in your teaching and these resources can be more useful and targeted to the specific needs of each individual in your audience, your students. You can also use some technologies that will learn over time from your habits and your responses. They will be adaptive and responsive and will help you grow even more. You can also use dashboards to guide learners through their learning or prepare individualized interventions. Apart from that, you can also do more administrative, uh, let's say, tasks like uh, score essays faster, but also more accurately. Or you can use chatbots to help your students get immediate feedback on specific questions that they might have. I could exactly number a lot of um, applications of AI and data in school, but as you can understand, there are a lot of ways to use 
data in school. In general, what we wanted to do is to start exploring all this data that are collected, used and processed in education. These data are called educational data. So we would like not only to find out what these data are and what they include, but how can we use them in a smart manner to assist us, teachers and staff, to use this data effectively so that we can improve our teaching and our learning for our students. That was always the main goal and the main vision of using AI at, sc at schools. So as you can see, it's actually a very good intention and a very interesting one. And of course, we didn't start from scratch. We already knew that there are some projects funded by Erasmus Plus and Digital Europe that tackled the issue of AI. Schools were already interested gradually in implementing AI projects at school, so they started applying for funding at the European Commission. We also created and updated the digital competencies framework that includes all competencies, digital competencies that people could have in this new century we're living in. And we also included artificial intelligence and data management in this digital competencies framework, as we know that these are also very important. We also learned from various initiatives on AI and data by other international organizations, OECD, UNESCO, UNICEF, are also working and have a strong interest in how AI is used in education. So we discuss with these international organizations, we discuss with member states that are also uh, using or showing interest in using AI, and all of us together tried to align with some EU initiatives that already exist in the field of AI. Some years ago, in 2019, the European Commission already developed ethical guidelines for trustworthy AI. That, that was done some years ago, and from these guidelines, we also had an assessment list for trustworthy AI. This is called Altai. Currently, along with these guidelines in the assessment list, the Commission has also proposed an AI Act that will create a legal framework around the use of AI in every possible setting, including, of course, education. And then, of course, we have the Data Act that mentions how we should tackle data. I think that many of you might already be familiar with the GDPR, which talks about privacy and how to tackle data in various settings. The Data Act is a holistic approach on data management. And of course, we have the European De Declaration and many other documents and policies and initiatives that support this ecosystem around AI. So as you can see, we didn't really start from scratch. There was a background, there was also a, a huge interest and a growing demand to tackle AI in education. So let's see a little bit about the ethical guidelines and how they are used uh, in teaching and learning. To start with, we really think that when we use AI and data in education properly, this means that we can also define the educational purposes of our targeted lessons, of our targeted plans, and how to proceed with teaching and learning. These guidelines can actually help you understand how to incorporate AI and data in these plans you are preparing, these educational purposes you have. The guidelines can also, can also have, help you focus a little bit on some ethical considerations. We realize that many teachers, many parents, or even students might be concerned of, of, on this um, explosion of data use in education. So these guidelines actually try to help you understand some ethical considerations and help you tackle them in the best possible manner. We are also providing some guiding examples on how to have a constructive dialogue on AI systems ethical use. We try to help you start a dialogue with various stakeholders, like the other teachers, maybe your headmasters or school leaders, parents associations and other stakeholders. We would really like to invite you to engage in a conversation with all of these stakeholders on how to use AI in education in a practical but also an ethical manner. And last but not least, we will also like to help especially teachers to develop 
their competencies, their digital competence, competencies in this specific field of AI. I will just show you some examples of what is included in the guidelines so that you can understand more about these chapters. Before that, very briefly, I will tell you that we consulted a lot of stakeholders while we were actually preparing these guidelines. We started in June 2021 with creating an expert group on AI composed of 26 people, including academics, uh, teachers, NGOs, private sector, but also international organizations. So for about a year, these people were starting to explore how AI and data is used in education. They created the background report on the topic and starting from this report, we all together in the Commission with this expert group started developing the ethical guidelines. In between, of course, we wanted to ask the opinion of the teachers as you are our main audience and we expect you to use gradually these guidelines. So we had a lot of consultations and workshops with e-twinning primary and secondary schools. Many teachers joined these e-twinning workshops in February, and we also launched across the European Union and an online school survey to ask you some specific questions on what would you expect to read in these guidelines. And of course, we also consulted the Delta Working Group, which is a working group consisting of uh, ministries across the EU member states and um, mostly ministries of education. So after consulting all these stakeholders and doing a very thorough background research on AI and data in education, we started drafting the final guidelines that were approved on June 14. As of then, the guidelines gradually were prepared uh, and we also prepared the fact sheet and an infographic to accompany the guidelines and give you some faster information. Just to mention here that today the guidelines are published in English, French, German and Bulgarian. By the end of November, they will be available in all European Union languages so that you can use it in your own language and don't have the need for a translation. Now, let's see a little bit what is included in the guidelines. In the guidelines, we start with some examples on how to use AI and data in education. We identified four main categories of how to use AI and data in education. We use them to teach our students. We use them to support the learning of our students. We also use them to support teachers or to support diagnostic and system-wide planning. I will explain in a minute what these four categories include with concrete examples. Apart from these examples, we also listed a number of ethical considerations and requirements that you need to have in mind even before you start using AI and data in education or before you start a project that employs AI. So there is a set of rules, a set of ethical considerations that you can reflect on and then decide the best possible system and also plan the best possible way to create and implement a project. These ethical considerations are followed by guiding questions. These guiding questions will actually help you start a dialogue with the community that you are working with to discuss if you need AI in education, on which of the four categories you find it more useful, what sort of systems you may select in order to use AI in any of the categories, and so on. These guiding questions will help you have an honest and transparent dialogue with the stakeholders so that you can have and make the best and most informed decisions about AI in schools. And then, of course, we also discuss a little bit about emerging competencies in this um, area. As you know, 30 years ago, almost none of us was using a computer, but gradually we developed some skills First, they were more basic, gradually they became more advanced or they became more specialized in specific software and so on. As AI and data are entering our everyday lives, we need to gain new competencies, emerging competencies, which we also tackle in these guidelines. And of course, to help everyone 
speak the same language and understand the same thing, we have also created a glossary of terms that is applied to education. This glossary will help everyone in a discussion and a community uh, to understand the same thing when they are talking about specific things. And of course, as mentioned in the beginning, we connect all this to the EU policy on AI. So let's have a look at some uh, stakeholders. These guidelines are mainly targeted for primary and secondary education teachers, okay? Active staff in school. However, many of the categories identified here have also an administrative aspect, which can apply to educational staff in formal education. Of course, apart from this, very, let's say, obvious and anticipated stakeholders, we can also discuss about the students or the parents. They will receive the benefits, let's say, of using AI in education, but they are also stakeholders that can find the guidelines quite useful because they will help them clarify a lot of concepts, misconceptions, and so on. And of course, these guidelines can also help policymakers in making best decisions, especially on a national level, to help every member state decide how they want to use AI in education and how to approach their planning. Now, how to make best use of the guidelines? The guidelines, as I said, identify examples, they raise awareness, they have questions, competencies, and use cases. Let's have a look at these use cases. When we discuss about AI and the fact that it helps student teaching, we need to have a look at some examples. For example, student teaching is aided when we use language learning applications. Many of you might be familiar with language applications that um, in which you actually solve some puzzles or do some tasks and then the system identifies your level. If you are a sole beginner, it actually gives you easier questions. If you are a more advanced user, it starts gradually to give you more difficult questions. This is a smart AI system that can help you learn a language more efficiently. Likewise, we can have tutoring systems that are based on dialogue or intelligent tutoring systems that, for example, identify an area where you might lack some knowledge and skills and they highlight it to you so that you can study or focus or practice more on a specific field that you need to train a little bit. Likewise, when we talk about student supporting, many of you might already have seen these 3D representations. For example, there is a 3D representation of the human body and uh, the professor, the teacher, along with his students, can actually remove some organs and play around a little bit so that people, students, can learn more about the human body. Virtual reality and 3D representations is quite, something quite uh, familiar, I think, to many teachers already. This is exploratory learning. And of course, we have the formatting, writing assessments. Many of you have probably used online quizzes that are quite smart and they give you the results immediately with feedback on what you did wrong, or even they give you links on what to study further to improve your performance. And of course, we also have AI supported collaborative learning, which, for example, can help, can help a teacher group the students according to their level or according to their needs. The AI system identifies the needs and the level of the student and then pairs them or groups them accordingly. In teacher supporting, I think that the most usual um, use case of uh, AI is essay scoring. AI can identify a problem in learning and they can give you targeted feedback, these systems. Likewise, it's quite regular, let's say common these days, to use AI systems for forum monitoring. In that case, the system actually monitors forums and identifies some areas of concern judging from the writings of the student. For example, if a student in a forum mentions that he's having difficulty in a topic, the AI system identifies this and notifies the teacher so that he can take some further action and assist the student. And of course, we have system supporting, which is another example of how to use AI in education. I would say that uh, the first one has to do with resource allocation, like grouping students. The other one has to do with diagnosing learning difficulties or guidance services. 
One example that I find very common these days has to do with uh, an administrative system that identifies the absences of students when they are out of school, and then it matches it with the topic, the lesson the teacher taught on that day. So the system can tell the teacher that his student A missed this lesson, which in included concepts A and B. So the teacher should reinforce the student by giving him exercises and tasks on the topics that the student missed because of an absence. This is all about system supporting, which is quite useful, um, I would say. Of course, when we use all these systems, we also need to discuss a little bit about the ethical use. Human agency is how you actually use the tool. Do you use it in a good or a bad manner? Do you use it for the benefit or for punishment of students, for example? Also, do you use a, do you use a, tool, a tool in a fair manner? Is it a justified choice why you use tool A and not tool B? All these considerations, along with many others that include transparency, non-discrimination, accountability, privacy and data concerns, are also tackled in the guidelines and you can read more about them and also find some guiding questions that will help you understand if the system you have selected, the tool you have selected, is the best possible for the occasion you want to use it. Let's have a look, for example, in, an, in the example of the scoring ACs using automated tools. You can use an AI tool to assess your students' written assignments. Of course, you should also have the ethical considerations in mind. So you should respect the privacy of your student. You should also make sure that the system evaluates this assignment, assess it in a proper manner. There is no bias and no discrimination. All of these are tackled in the guidelines and are explained quite thoroughly. Along with the scoring essays, which is just an example, you can also have these questions like, for example, are there procedures to ensure that AI use will not lead to discrimination? You have to check the procedure that you're going to use when you have a tool. You can also ask yourself, who is responsible for the ongoing monitoring of the results that an AI system produces? Who is responsible on how these results are used and how they are used? Or, for example, you can also ask yourself and self-reflect a little bit on how teachers and school leaders understand the way you are using AI tools. Do they share your opinion that these tools are useful or not useful? If you conclude uh, that they are not useful, do you have an open dialogue with all the stakeholders so that everyone feels really comfortable with the AI tools? These are just some of the questions and the scenarios that you can uh, ask yourself. Likewise, when you use adaptive learning technologies to define or adapt a learner's ability, these considerations, especially for non-discrimination, should also be taken in mind. Of course, we can continue with more questions like this. These are all just some examples. All the material will be available to you after this webinar. So how to get involved? The guidelines give you some examples on how to get involved and plan for effective use of AI and data in school. How to review the AI systems, how to start a policy or a procedure in your school on how to select and use an AI system. You may even carry out a pilot. The guidelines will help you do that. Or you can find out ways to collaborate with stakeholders and monitor the AI systems. We would also like to urge you to raise awareness and community engagement to start discussing with your colleagues, with your head um, masters and school leaders, even with your parents. Start discussing about AI because AI is here to stay. So it's best that we try to understand it and use it to our benefit. And of course, in terms of professional development, you can also consider the emerging competencies for the ethical use of AI and data. You may also consult the Digital Competencies Framework, the new version 2.2, and learn more about that as well. So if you're interested to know more about it, you can actually get in touch through our email, AAC Digital Education. You can use this QR code or visit 
the website. The website is Digital Education Action Plan and it's Action 6. You can visit this and find out more about the guidelines. The guidelines, the executive summary of the report, the infographic and the fact sheet are all available on this website of the Digital Education Action Plan. And we are here to help you understand the guidelines. So get in touch with us if necessary. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Maria, uh, for presenting uh, the guidelines that, as you said, uh, you published just yesterday. I'm sure they, they are great, add value and can become a point of reference for all teachers who, who approach the use of artificial intelligence. And as you pointed out, I think parents, maybe above all, may be worried by the amount of data shared and certainly the existence of some guidelines that are accessible to, to all can be a useful to, to clarify some doubts and, and concerns. And also, as you said, uh, artificial is in, intelligence is entering our lives and therefore we must acquire skills to, to be able to, to manage it better at our best, I would say. But there seems to be a lot of things to learn. So uh, a question would be, what do you think could be the first concrete step for a teacher to take and how to approach the, the reading and application then of, of these guidelines? Thank you very much for this question. Honestly, uh, this is something I pointed out a lot. I would start by having a dialogue, an open and transparent dialogue with the stakeholders. If not all at once, I would start with the colleagues and the headmaster, an open dialogue that needs to be informed. I think that the guidelines can help anyone interested to steer a conversation and not just have a dialogue without a specific and concrete agenda. So the guidelines can help you start a dialogue. Um, the guidelines can help you start a dialogue that is very targeted. It has specific topics and then you can extend it to the rest of the stakeholders, for example, the parents or depending on the type of school and the country the discussion is taking place in with policy makers. The, the step where you select the actual tool comes quite later, I would say. First, you have a dialogue, then you need to organize and plan a little bit on how you're going to use AI for which of the four categories, and then start piloting gradually some of the AI applications before you go um, all deep in AI. So I would probably start like this with a dialogue, then a careful planning, and then with a selection of specific tools. It comes much later. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria. And once again, thank you for inviting for, for being with us today, for accepting our, our invitation. And I would invite you to stay with us uh, for the rest of the time and uh, take a look at the chat as well. So in case some questions I will start uh, comes a bit later, you, you, you can respond directly in the chat. Thank you. Just, thank you very much. Just to let you know, Marta, yes. I will start sharing all the links to the guidelines and everything. That's I absolutely great. And respond to questions. Thank you. Thank you. That's absolutely great because I saw that many people were asking for, for the links. Indeed. So, um, moving forward, I would like now to invite uh, Marco Neves on our virtual stage. Marco is an expert in artificial intelligence in education, consultant on digital education for the second year organization, professor of computer science and coordinator of educational projects and also CEO of Interact Ideas. Marco, thank you very much for being with us today and the floor is yours. I think you can upload your presentation. Mm, yes, I, I will do it. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank you for the invitation. It's really a great pleasure to be here with you discussing such a pertinent and critical thematic for, for education, not only for education, but in, in, in the scope of this webinar related with education. And I also would like to congratulate all the ones that were involved in producing such an important and pertinent uh, report related with uh, one of the most sensible uh, topics of, of AI and, and of course all the, the, the expert group that produce um, a guide that I think uh, all the teachers and everybody that is involved in education should take, take, take a look 
and, and, and read because it's, it's very important in, in terms of integrated AI in education. So I will share my screen. Okay, I perfect. think we can see it perfectly. Is, yeah. Okay, yeah. so the 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 scope of, of of my presentation will focus on AI and education, of course, but uh, somehow in line uh, with the presentation of, of Maria related with the the ethical uh, guidelines for AI in education, and consider that uh, AI um, should be an opportunity uh, for all. I will uh, drive you uh, during my presentation. First, uh, uh, I will talk a little bit about the thematic of artificial uh, intelligence in a wider scope. And then um, I will focus on AI and education and also give some examples of, of some tools and, and some platforms that can be used um, in the classroom or in education using AI. Um, some of the contents that I will um, use on my presentation, they were generated by AI algorithms. These first two images, as you can see here, they were generated by um, a system, it's called Midjourney, where you can give a prompt and it generates an uh, um, image. And uh, my prompt was basically about AI being an opportunity for, for all humans and be used uh, for good. And that was, was, was the, um, the result. I would like to, to start with an answer. I think that the times what you are living are very complex also for, for education and also in the thematic of um, artificial intelligence. And this is a question from Yandrish, and is asking if in 15 years from now will be there uh, be a human or a robot teaching. Um, and the, 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 where we should uh, focus on that and the uh, rephrase in terms of, of the question is more about the, the combination of human and artificial uh, intelligence in the way that um, we can uh, deliver the best uh, learning opportunities to our uh, students, uh, drive it by the best uh, practical pedagogicals, and of course, in terms of teaching. The only question here on this slide is I, I think we don't have 15, uh, 50 years uh, to reflect. This is something that we should start discussing right now and looking about the best opportunities that we uh, can um, develop and of course we can offer to our students. But um, I would like to start by um, demystify uh, artificial intelligence because um, a lot of people look at, at, at artificial intelligence. Um, we don't know uh, what is clear uh, AI, and sometimes around this, some myths are, are built around um, the topic of artificial intelligence. And I would like to focus mainly in, in three points in trying to demystify artificial intelligence, because I think that is very important um, in the way that we look at AI, AI in education, AI in society, AI in uh, every other fields of our lives. And I will start with, with the first one. And I would like to ask you if you think that AI is something new. This something, because the last years we have been talking a lot about AI. We have been talking more and more about AI. As Maria was saying, AI is here to stay and will impact a lot our lives. But it's important for us to know that AI is not something new. I'm just presenting here uh, three dates. There is more that are important in the history of AI. The first one is 1950. Uh, it was when Alan Turing uh, wrote an amazing paper where he, for the first time, posed a question about if machines um, uh, can think. And this is, is a crucial moment in, in the beginning of, of, of the starting of, of AI. The second one is 1956. It was uh, the time of the Darth Mouse um, conference where a group of experts from different fields uh, work around the thematic of artificial intelligence and uh, the, the, the term uh, artificial intelligence was defined by John McCarthy for the first time. Then if we come closer to our time, we have uh, 2012. It was 
one of the new waves of artificial intelligence and mainly support in some particular areas of technological development in, in artificial intelligence, such as machine learning and also neural networks. And here we are today, okay, facing all the challenge, all the opportunities, but also the concerns that we have related with artificial intelligence. So the first uh, myth is that AI is not something new. The second one is when we look at AI and what AI can do and mainly do uh, to the press and all the buzz that is around uh, AI and a lot of hype also, is sometimes we could consider AI uh, as something magic, but AI is just a technology. AI is just something that came from, from science. Uh, in other moments of our history, we have uh, other uh, developments such as fire, electricity, radio, that at, at, at the first impression is that it was something like, like magic. But once we understand it, once, it, once we know what it means, once, once we know what are uh, their impacts. We just came um, in the environment that is just part of our life and we use it um, in, in, in a normal way in, in our day lives. Another myth is related with intelligence and this is the most critical one. And most of the discussion around this is because we call it artificial intelligence. And the question is, is AI by any possibility really intelligent? In my opinion, no. And that depends on, on the lots of considerations. That depends also mainly in the, the way that we define and difficulty that we have to define what is uh, uh, intelligence. And in that particular, I just would like to share with you just to see also as we humans, we evolve in the terms of defining intelligence. So I will just share three uh, brief um, definitions of intelligence. This is from 1912, so it's mainly based on IQ, is about uh, intelligence conscience. And this was uh, for a long, long time even applied in terms of, of schools and in policies related with, with education. Then in 1983, we have what? We um, are aware about the multiple intelligence from, from Gardner, and we clear start to understand there is different intelligence in, in the way that we address these questions of intelligence. And in the last years, and of course, uh, taking a look about um, the history of artificial intelligence is what some uh, experts call the last exclusivity of the humankind. So we have a lot of things that we consider as the unique ones uh, related with these aspects, such as being in the center of the universe, uh, such as um, being in, in, in the world as by some kind of uh, special um, artifacts, uh, just the, the way that we look about conscience and unconscious. And the last one is about intelligence. And nowadays, we start to talk about the question of intelligence, not only for the humans, but with agents that have the ability in the different uh, environments to achieve goals that we consider that was need human intelligence um, to perform. But if we just go a little bit more around the uh, artificial intelligence, what I normally uh, um, affirm is that what is artificial is unlike to be intelligence, and what is intelligent is unlike to be uh, artificial. But because nowadays we have these misconceptions about intelligence, mixing uh, what we call the digital intelligence or the syntax intelligence, and we read a lot on, on the press that AI is trying to mimic human intelligence, sometimes this brings to the discussion and to the, 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 the debate some uh, confusions that are created uh, around this. And it's also very interesting, this this um, sentence from uh, Melichamp is, he, he says that artificial, in artificial intelligence is real. 
But even given this perspective that we have to be aware about the myth related with uh, artificial intelligence, about using intelligence or intelligent to call that to a platform or to a tool, what we also know is that artificial intelligence is really powerful as a technology. And once it's really powerful, it's also very transformative and is also causing disruption. And by causing disruption, has a lot of impact in our lives, in our ever aspects of our life, social, economical, cultural, uh, ethical, geopolitical. And we also need to understand that sometimes in the history of humankind, we have what we call general purpose technology. And AI, just like electricity, is a general purpose technology. And why? Because it's not just impact a particular aspect of our lives, is impact in general, is a macro technology that is impact almost everything. And giving um, this, this structure or this understanding related with artificial intelligence, it's also important to have a definition for artificial intelligence. And, and once again, this is something that is not really easy. And um, giving the, 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 the developments and the very, very fast pace of transforming in terms of artificial intelligence is not easy to, to have a clear definition. But I will just give you two and for you to uh, have an understanding uh, in terms of both. The first one is for one of the fathers of artificial intelligence called John McCarthy is one. It, it was one of the, the members of the um, Dartmouth uh, conference in, in 1956 and simply it defined as the science and the engineering of making intelligence machine. But what are intelligence machines? What is intelligence? How we can apply it? But if we come a little bit more um, close uh, to today, uh, we start uh, redefine the, uh, the definition for artificial intelligence. And what we have here that we know is AI systems are algorithms models. OK, they are able to uh, develop some uh, cognitive uh, perceptual functions. And some of these functions are thinking, judging, reasoning, human, uh, and, and, and so on. So it's for us just to have this clear understand in terms of artificial intelligence. And another thing that I consider that is also important, uh, once we need to develop uh, AI literacy, um, once AI is impacting so much uh, our lives, and, and, we, and we need to educate the, the young ones for so they have a clear perspective when we are talking about artificial intelligence, it's also important to know that artificial uh, intelligence uh, have different uh, fields of technical development, what we call paradigms, okay? And, and so, some of them along the history of, of, of artificial intelligence were used more than, than others. Um, in the beginning was mainly logic uh, based uh, systems and nowadays we are the technical development is more in the statistical um, frame and mainly on machine learning and uh, neural networks but but this is, this is important in, in terms of, of, of the, the, the the discussion in the way that we address these topics and also, clear, important, and I really like to um, highlight these questions, is that artificial intelligence is a technological challenge, but the technological challenge is the less important of all the challenges that we have related with, with artificial intelligence. It's also a social challenge, economic, geopolitical, ecological, ethical, but mainly a human challenge. And that's the way that we have to address human challenge is mainly through education. And we cannot forget this. As I was saying to you in the need of uh, developing um, AI and acquiring AI uh, literacy is only through education that we, we, we can achieve it. Uh, 
once uh, I have this 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 framework, so in terms of understand, I would like to now focus more in the field of AI and education and 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 in, in particular, and it's not only about AI; it's also about data. We know that data is uh, everywhere. If we look at the classroom, we cannot see all the data that is flowing inside of a classroom. Doesn't have to be the formal uh, um, space of learning. The classroom could be outside of the classroom, could be uh, anywhere, but mainly focus here on, on, on the classroom. We have a cloud of data that is, is, is flowing. Uh, we use a lot about uh, digital platforms, digital uh, device. We are always connected. Our students are always connected. And all the interactions that we have with these systems, they are producing data. And they are uh, large amounts of data. And we humans, we have some limitations in terms of processing this data. That's why we need artificial intelligence to be able to deal with such uh, big amounts of, of, of data, to find patterns on, on, on that data, to help us make decisions um, uh, concerning um, that data. And this is in the uh, educational uh, environment. And before I go in, 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 in some examples and define the different uh, fields of um, AI and education, I would like just to go to some, let's call it, provocations related with the times in education that we are living, living linked with, with artificial intelligence. Um, uh, uh, I, I sometimes uh, say that we are living in the age of smart agents and we are surrounded by dumb educational systems. But when I mention dumb is not on the literal uh, sense of, of dumb, is that we are not able to have educational systems, that these educational systems can provide the opportunities to we enhance the potential of each of our students. So is is mainly a fit for all. And given that we have a technology that is properly used, we can somehow trying uh, to tackle this this issue, issue by having also educational systems that are able to adapt to particular needs of the institutions but mainly in terms of of the students but another important thing also uh, related with ai and education is that we must guarantee that ai and education should be an open box and not a black box and what we I, I mean related with this this is related in the way that the technical um, aspects of AI are using today and we are mainly talk about neural networks and what happens inside the the decisions that are uh, made using all the data that is collected we cannot clear understand how the decision was made and in, 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 in this particular, we cannot give the leadership in terms of the learning process, because learning is more than anything a social uh, interaction to an AI algorithm, just take the, the, the decisions instead of as humans, instead of the teachers. That's why that AI for education platforms and tools that are developed, they should be as open box and not as um, a black box. Another thing that is very important that I'm, I'm really critical concerning the integration of AI in education in the teaching and learning uh, process is if we are using AI to support outdated pedagogical models, if we are using AI to keep doing the things that we have uh, do in terms of education, not to make a difference is better not to use AI. Wayne Holmes, one of the great uh, experts on the field of AI and education, he call it automate poor pedagogical practice. So AI should not be used for that. We have to find a way where we're using AI to promote um, learning environments 
where we can work to collaboration. We can promote the creativity of, of our uh, students, the different interactions with the supporting of the systems and not to automate um, the, the education, taking the teacher out of, of the process. And this is, 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 is a critical question because uh, sometimes we take a look about the, the platforms and, and the tools and they are focused what they call personalize the learning and what they do is individualize the learning. And we don't want systems that individualize the learning. We want systems that support us as, as teachers, as educators in creating the opportunities link it with the critical competences that we identify that our students need. Given this um, intersection uh, related with AI and, and education, I will, uh, would like to share where and how AI fits in education. And I will focus on four different containers. Um, they have been defined along the, 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 the research and investigation related with AI and, and education. These four ones, they are also mentioned uh, in the last, uh, in the pre preliminary report of the Council of Europe related with AI and education, and they are mainly these ones. One is about learning with AI. Maria uh, also uh, mentioned this, is about teaching facing tools to support the, the teaching process, uh, learner facing tools to support learning, and of course, also for the system uh, facing tools. I will give you some examples in the next slides related to this. Another field of AI in education is learning for AI. And this is mainly related with developing the knowledge and the skills in how AI impacts the different comp components of uh, our life. So it's important also to focus that our students of, and, and of course, we need to, to train and to prepare uh, the teachers for this to understand what is AI and also to build with AI, taking uh, in consideration the hum, uh, human and, and, and tech uh, uh, sides of, of this uh, issue. Another one is learning about AI. So it's about creating the conditions, curricular and dynamics, so uh, the students can explore the different uh, fields of, 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 of AI and how they uh, can uh, use it in, in, in terms of social, economical, cultural impact and also AI transforming society. And the four uh, container is learning about learning, is about all the data that is produced by these interactions in terms of using the teaching facing tools, the learning facing facing tools related with big data, learning analytics, the data driven decisions at system level as resource management. So is very uh, another important area of that. But what I, I consider that is also critical because we, we, we uh, see a lot about the first container learning with AI and I think that we are not giving the, 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 the importance and, and the need about these two also. It's very important in terms of the social and economical development of, 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 of Europe that our students learn about AI and learn uh, learning also um, uh, for AI. Once again, we have to create awareness about AI, about the impacts of AI, about opportunities of AI, but also about the concerns that we have related to AI. So we also have to create the conditions where uh, these uh, questions are also integrated at the uh, curriculum level. Um, I would like to, to, to go to the last part of my presentation. Uh, I don't have time to, to explore the, the, the different tools that can be used in, in the, the, the different uh, levels uh, related with learning with AI, but I, I would like to share with, uh, with you some, some of them. Uh, the first one in terms of the uh, teaching uh, work is first pass is uh, a platform uh, where the teach, uh, teacher can um, um, introduce um, and prepare uh, the model where the students will interact with this model and at the same time is uh, uh, answering the questions, the platform will give them hints and helps. So is mainly based on a formative um, uh, interaction. Great scope is a, a tool that can help teachers in terms of, 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 of grading. 
and teacher is giving the, their notes and, and, and the system is, is supporting on on that tasks. And another um, type of, of, of tools and platforms that we have here is what uh, are called the AI coach or the AI assistants. Uh, I'm just uh, making mention here to AI coach from Athena, where uh, AI is helping this, uh, the teacher. If you uh, record your classrooms and it, it can give you um, uh, ints and, and, and support in terms of the the teacher um, in the teaching uh, process. Uh, for students, we are mainly here talking, as uh, Maria also mentioned, related with intelligent teacher systems, dialogue based uh, uh, teacher uh, systems. And I would like also to mention too, a system is, is, is a very interesting one where the teacher deliver the contents to, to the students. Students receive uh, automatic feedback uh, about what they are doing, and the teacher also receives this feedback so he can um, decide in terms of the next steps of the, the learning process. This is uh, Area 9 Lyceum is uh, an intelligent tutor system in the typical approach that we uh, do the mention uh, re related with this. So basically the platform uh, will uh, learn in terms of the re uh, deliver contents uh, to the student according to their in interactions. And for example, we has also have Cogni. Uh, Cogni is um, helping the students so the students can interact with the, 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 the platform by um, natural language uh, process. And this also give feedbacks in terms of the teacher, in terms of the, 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 the student performance. So this is in, in terms of learning uh, with AI. Also um, in the fields that I consider also very important to, to be um, discussed at uh, education level, is about exploring and building ethically with, with AI. I also uh, share with you three examples, elements of AI. So I think everybody already know about elements of, 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 of AI. Um, there is two uh, courses. There is also one about ethics. So if you uh, want to explore these thematics with, with your students, AI for K-12 is, is a framework that is developed on the United States, is around the big five ideas of AI from reasoning, uh, social impact and machine learning and activities that are defined for uh, different uh, school um, levels and also teams in AI. But related with this, there is uh, so many examples if you are interested to uh, introduce this with your students and in your classroom. Um, to finish, just some particular tools that you can, can, can use. Um, some of them are uh, very uh, well known. Uh, Duolingo, in terms of language learning. Photomat use computer vision, and this could be interesting if your students struggle in solving uh, math problems and you point to, 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 to the problem on the paper and gives you uh, all the, the, the process of solving that, that, that question. Maybe some teacher could start asking, but I don't I don't want something that gives the whole solution. But what AI in education also makes us think is sometimes to inverse the, the process or think about new approach that we, we, we can use related with the pedagogical practice that we have uh, until now. Socratic um, also have uh, computer vision and uh, other functionalities that you can use. The reading process is from Teams where your students are uh, reading a, a text and it automatically gives feedback to the students in terms of the reading uh, process of, of, of the student. Another one is related with the use of um, AI to create or to build. We have teachable machine. We also have machine learning for, uh, for kids. This one, Merlin Mind, is mainly a device that use uh, uh, natural language uh, processing where you can interact with your technology uh, by moving freely in, in the classroom. So you can ask just uh, open my PowerPoint, uh, play the video at two minutes and, and, and five seconds. And with no AI, but just by collecting data and using data, Google Forms, Microsoft Forms are also an interesting approach in terms, in terms of this. I will just like to finish 
with the conclusion. Uh, the presentation will be shared, so I will not read the conclusion to you related with, with my presentation. What I can tell you is that this text was not written by me. So this was written by an AI algorithm. So this is another of the, discuss the discussions and another of the concerns that we have to address nowadays. So just imagine a student that you ask them, ask an essay to the student to produce, and you can they can use a tool like Write Sonic, where you just give the prompt, and the AI algorithm will give you an original, um, let's say, text. Um, and this is also some of the of of the questions related with AI and education. These are some of the tools nowadays that you can just use a prompt text to image text to 3d text to video or text to to screenplay and i will like also to mention the question related with the digital divide but also the, the ai divide and we have to have different layers and identify these different layers from the ones that do not have access to ai until we reach the students that have access to ai understand it and can use it properly and in this particular, we can think about a framework from the hardware side and the software side that are a, a group of topics that we should give opportunities for our students. And do not forget that our intelligence is what makes us human and AI is just an extension of that quality and AI in education must be an opportunity for all. And once again, this image that you are seeing here, they were generated by an AI algorithm where I just prompt for learning space of the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Marco, for, for your presentation. Uh, there were some questions in the chat, but I saw that most of them were addressed already since we are running. Uh, we are running out of time. I need to give a couple information uh, for the for the participants before we leave. First of all, we have posted in the chat. My colleague has posted in the chat the evaluation form. So please save the link. You can complete it later, but just save the link because it won't be available anymore once we close this meeting. And then uh, another information about an upcoming course we have. Uh, it's for the for all the participants and it's about what you can do with data in the classroom. The course will start on the 7th of November and conclude on, 16, on the 16th of December. You have the link in the chat and you can just take a look and decide if you want to participate. So uh, we are reaching the end of this of this session we spent one interesting hours I, I hope it was useful and inspiring for for all the teachers here i remind you that the recording will be available uh, in the next days on the webinar page together with the material we presented some participants were asking uh, because they wanted to rewatch the recording uh, to internalize better internalize the information you have given uh, today I, I wish you all a, all a good evening. Thank you very much once again to you both, Maria and Marco, for, for accepting our invitation and for giving this, uh, this presentation today. Thank you. I wish you all a good evening and see you soon.